Alright guys, time to start another brand new build. This one is going to be super awesome. I've been thinking about it for a super long time. If you guys follow my Instagram, which is Highway49RC, you guys will know what I'm talking about. You guys won't know specifically, but you'll have seen teaser photos, stuff that I've posted, you know. Um, and so I'm super excited to get started on this. So what we're going to be building, I've mentioned in a couple videos now, um, we're actually going to be building a scale trailer. Um, my plan is it's going to be pretty much all steel, it's going to have a wooden deck, it's going to have lights on it, leaf sprung suspension, 1.55 wheels and tires, um, that's basically what it's going to be. I've got dimensions and stuff, which I'll get into later, but what we're going to be starting with today is the axles. So I've already prepped, or I've already built one right here um, for you guys to see. So basically what we have here is a piece of smaller pipe here and then some uh, wider pieces on the outside um, that hold the bearings in the ends which allow the hex on the end to spin. This is completely custom made, you're not going to find anything like this anywhere else. It's pretty simple, just an inner tube with some uh, pieces of tube that slide over the ends that get welded on, um, and that's about it. Okay, so what we have for material here is some um, steel pipe and some tubing from McMaster Car. That was actually the only place that I could find basically what I needed. And just these two pieces plus the um, actual shaft material, which I don't have here um, to show you guys, all of that actually cost me $80. Thankfully, uh, shout out to my dad. He said he'd split it with me because it's material. So thumbs up to him. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so I already cut the inside tube to 10 and a half inches. My camera punked out and didn't actually record it. For the outer little rings, um, I'm doing a quarter inch plus 5.30 seconds. It's a little bit of a weird measurement, but that just leaves me with extra um, because you end up grinding a little bit off to make the bearing fit just right. So now the idea basically is just to get these outer, or these little pieces I need to make fit over the ends. Um, so I'm just, what I do for these ones, I just file out the burr on the inside. And then for the longer piece, I chuck it in my hand drill here and uh, run it along the file to get the burr off. Okay, so back to my little drill trick here. Just chuck the um, inner rod in the drill, and I'm just, I've just been using a piece of uh, like plumber's emery paper here to sand up the end to get the, um, the outer ring here to fit. So after a little bit of spinning around on the end, on the emery paper, um, I also took my Dremel to the inside of these just to um, loosen them up a little bit so now they go on there. Alright, so as you can see, I got my vice grip set up here uh, with the little uh, end cap thing on there, just kind of clamped in place. Tack weld.
finished product. This side here is a little bit lumpy, and on the other side, it came out really, really nice, a lot like um, the other one. I want the bearing to fit really nicely in the end here, and right now, obviously, it doesn't. Um, so what I've been doing is just using my Dremel tool here with a sanding drum on it just to like clean out the inside. Okay, so just now, actually, I came across an issue that it appears that I've squished my um, my pipe here a little bit. I'm not sure how well you guys can really see that, but I actually squished it a little bit, and so it'll take me a while to get the bearing to go in. But what I think I'm going to try and do is maybe just pound it out a little bit and see if that works. So, All right, so that didn't take me too long. It's definitely a little bit of a pain in the butt um, because I got the one end kind of squished down a little bit. Um, this... This side here doesn't actually need to be ground down that much, just like a tiny bit. This side though needs it a bit more. Um, so I'll show you what I do for that. Basically what I do is I just have like a little piece of wire here like this with the little like L bent in it. And that's the same like depth as the bearing here. And then basically I just use this little piece of wire as a reference for when I go to grind it off with the grinder. Alrighty, there we go. One side, the side's um, nice, or it's a little bit too loose for my liking, um, but I mean the wheel hex will hold it in there um, anyways with the pin and stuff. This side is actually pretty tight, um, but it goes in there by hand, it requires just a little bit of tapping to see all the way in there. And there you go. So that's basically the main axle part done like the housing part. Next, it's time to move on to the actual actual uh, the actual axle shaft itself. <laughs> yeah, I already have this one that I can use. I don't I didn't do it using all my my little tricks that I have <clears throat> um cuz I just didn't kind of figure it out basically. So basically, I'm not a master machinist and so if I mess up, I've got an extra one here if I need, you know. I'm going to cut this guy exactly 12 inches here. So what I'm going to do here over at my lathe is I'm going to file off the little burr that um, was created from cutting it. And then I'm also going to cut the threads on it. Okay, so here's my little trick for cutting um, threads. Uh, I kind of just figured this out the other day. But so what I was doing before was I was just using a file to get a little chamfer on my on the end of my piece here so that then my die will start nice and straight. So what I do is I just um, I put I set the jaws of the chuck small enough so it'll go in the back of my of my die handle here. <clears throat> Apologies if I call it a tap because I forget because <laughs> I'm so used to saying tap handle and tapping and stuff. But anyway, and I just bring it up close. I don't like put a lot of pressure on it, just enough that it sits there. Now what I do, and what I uh, should have done before that, is put a little bit of uh, cutting fluid on. I My favorite stuff is this Tap Magic. It's actually just like the best stuff in the world. You don't break as many taps, you don't break as many dies, it's just really, really great. I'll slip that in there, bring it right up to it, and basically my chuck serves as the square as I start cutting my threads here. Um, of course if you have a lathe or if you have a uh, mill or whatnot or a special jig for this sort of work, by all means use that and I would be using that too in this moment but you know I don't have that. So I, all I do is I just get it started here just a couple threads on there like that and then um, basically I do the same thing to the other side and then take it over to my vise and uh, finish the, the threading there. Alright, I finished putting the threads on the ends of the shafts and then I also marked where the holes need to be and filed um, the flat there so I can drill a little bit easier. Right, so the first thing that I like to do is I like to start off with a center drill here. It allows um, basically a really nice tight center 
and because it's so thick and tapers down to that little point there as you can see it doesn't like uh, walk at all so that allows um, your drill bit to get a really nice centered start on wherever you want to go. Next we move on to our actual drill bit. And there's your hole drilled. And then basically I'm just going to do the same thing on the other side. Cross my fingers that that's pretty straight, which it appears to be, which is good. So. Alright y'all, so I think we're on the final stretch here. My holes look pretty darn straight, right on center I'm hoping. Uh, the only way we're going to be able to tell though is um, clean up the ends and throw a hex on there. Man, I'm really crossing my fingers. I crossed my fingers both times when I was drilling that as well. <laughs> I'm just going to grab some emery paper again, basically, and um, spin it up in my drill. Just be careful not to bend it, because you have a lot of leverage here on the end of your drill. I actually did bend another um, one that I screwed up on. Um, yeah, just kind of sand the end down a little bit so you can get a bearing on there. and then. Alright guys, here's the moments of truth. Bearing doesn't fit on there all the way. I'll deal with that later, that's okay. What about this side? This one? Oh, oh. It's really, really close. I can't get all the way on though. Alright, pin is in there. Let's try the hex. Did I nail it? Here's the big test. <gasps> Dude, I nailed it! I actually freaking nailed it. Look at that. Actually got it perfect. Let's flip it around and try the other side. Cross your fingers, guys. Let's hope this is my best one yet. Not quite. Alright, you guys. It is assembly time. Back in from the garage. Spent probably four hours working on this today for you guys. Um, now we're back inside. Nice and warm, not shivering out there in the cold. Um, yeah, so basically the parts that I've got here are some Vanquish 5mm wheel nuts. I've got some Yaw Racing aluminum um, hex hubs, which I'm, that you guys have already seen. I just didn't really tell you what they were, but I got some Yaw Racing hex hubs. And some TBR, T, no, TRBRC uh, bearings. I think they're ABEC 5 bearings. I don't remember. Anyway, um, yeah, so you guys have already seen all that stuff, which you may not have seen if you don't follow my Instagram, which I, you know, I suggest you do. Um, I've got these 1.55 RC four-wheel drive uh, dirt grabber tires and some 1.55 stamp steel B-lock wheels. Um, I've already taken these out of the packages. Of course, I've got two sets there. Um, because these guys actually need to be drilled out along with my Yaw Racing hexes because these are 5mm axle shafts, not 4, um, like the standard. So, those are going to be so sick with the wheels and stuff on. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing how I made these, um, and I hope that they give you some cool ideas for projects of your own, you know? I would be just so happy if you, if one of my videos inspired one of my fellow uh, RC hobbyists to get out there and build something like this because I just think that it's super cool. There we go, much better. Alright. Put those in there. Just get those in here. When I re welded it, um, I didn't get the outer part on perfectly straight so it's a little bit bent or it's a little off center but that's okay it turned out pretty good I think come on there we go nice go that turns onto my hexes I'm not sure if you guys actually noticed but I'm using um, a different camera for filming than I usually do. I'm my, I've made a New Year's resolution, if uh, you will, and that is um, basically to make better quality video for you guys. So 
There we go, that side's in there. I'm using a Canon uh, T5i, and I'm using some uh, new studio lights actually that I got for Christmas. So that's pretty cool. Thank you to my mom for getting those for me. That was really, really, really cool. I'm going to put a washer in this side, actually. I'll do one on camera, one off camera for you guys. Um, but the thing I noticed is they actually need a little bit of spacing. Um, thankfully, the wheel nuts come with some washers that I can use. Um, I'll be getting some like actual spacers um, shipped in here uh, probably next week. I'll order them maybe tomorrow. So I'm not just using washers, I'm actually using like real shims for stuff, you know, so. And there we go. There is one axle shaft completely built. I love this. This is the one that I did today. And oh man, does it run smooth. I'm happy with that. I'm so happy with that. I gotta do the other side now. The bearing was being a little bit funny for it, but um... Oh, that's so good. I can't wait to go on and start building the rest of the trailer. This is going to be really cool. I'm going to go ahead and do this off camera. Um, and then I'll come back and show you putting together one of the beadlock wheels that I got too. Alright, time to start on the beadlocks here. Or should I say finish them. I've already got three done over here. <laughs> so, basically what we're going to do, I've already taken all the little screws out that it comes with. Um, so then you're left with these three pieces here. Um just put it inside or put the inner ring inside the tire just squidge it all in there and just kind of get it like seated around it properly I work the foam out of the bead like that and then I'm going to take your two halves here uh, put one in one side obviously and one in the other this make sure they line up because they're not actually symmetrical so um, just kind of like there we go try and find the two that line up and then we use the little silver back plate piece thing here I don't know what you call it thing with the hex in it um, and that goes just in the back there like that and then you may notice that these little short screws that you took out at the beginning don't actually go through all the way. At least that's what I noticed. And they provide, RC4 Drive provides these longer screws. So you can actually put them all the way through and get the whole deal cinched down um, before you put, or so that it's all cinched down and all the. Um, then all the little screws will actually go in there properly, you know? And then make sure when you're done um, mounting this up that um, you save these uh, little screws here too because, you know, if you need to put, them, put it back together in the future or something or you need to take them apart for some reason or another, um, then I'll have them, you know? So I'll definitely keep these and uh, it's time now to put them together, to put together what I've been working on all afternoon for you guys. It's been the last, I don't know, probably 20-ish minutes. I'm sorry if this has been a long video, but if it has, I hope that it's been worth it for you guys. So, we've got, alright, so we've got the axles, got all of the RC4 drive 1.55 dirt grabber tires right here and um, a wrench here and my vanquish wheel nuts I think, I think, I think, I think we're ready to put these together I'm really excited because I've been like working all week on this you know like to get the mock up and everything done so let's put these bad boys together. Uh, what I've done, just um, to let you guys know, is I did put a washer in one side between the hex and the bearing. 
Um, I'm gonna get some uh, like proper shims coming sometime soon. I think I already mentioned that. Um, so I'm not just using washers, but I'll do that later off camera. You guys don't need to see that. So let's go ahead and start mounting these up. I'm extremely psyched here. This is absolutely awesome. Can't believe I'm actually building this. There you go. Dude, check that out. A pair of trailer axles. This is so cool. I can't believe it. This is actually awesome. They work. They roll super great. Whoop. Bearings are super smooth. Look at that. Yeah. Completely handmade. Completely custom. All my own. This is going to be amazing. So on the trailer, they're going to be spaced about this wide. Approximately, let's see. Yeah, about that wide, I think. And then there's also going to be leaf springs on here, like leaf spring suspension. Yeah, this is going to be so cool. Alright, guys. It's getting late for me. It's like 9 o'clock right now, p.m., literally. I've been working at this since like 1 o'clock, so... Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys were super inspired by this. That's my goal of these videos, is to get you guys inspired in, and into the hobby of RC. If you've never like gotten into it ever before, or, like have never had anything RC, this is the kind of stuff that you can do, and it's really awesome. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Please leave a like, subscribe, comment down below. As always, let me know what you think. Tell me if this is awesome or if you think that I'm just stupid. <laughs> I don't think any of you will say that. You guys are pretty nice. And thank you for all the support and all the comments and stuff on my videos. It really makes me feel good and really um, like helps me get motivated to make more videos because I see that people are enjoying them and like they really enjoy what I make. So thanks again, guys. Thanks again, guys. Um, I don't think I really have anything else to say other than uh, make sure you follow my Instagram. I posted a couple pictures during filming um, this video. So if you don't want to or if you don't, let's see, yeah, if you don't want to miss out on stuff like that while I'm filming new videos, make sure you head over there, highway49 underscore RC, all that good stuff. So, yeah, that's about all for me. Make sure you guys tune in next weekend for the whole, like, top bed deck part. That's going to be an awesome one. Anyway, enough of me rambling, guys. Thanks for watching.